You're listening to an AINC original podcast. We believe you don't have to do life without a compass. Let us be your guide on this amazing journey. Welcome to Navigating Life with Vision Loss. Hello and welcome to Navigating Life with Vision Loss. I'm your host, Kim Wardlow. Um, Thanks for tuning in today. Thank you for the feedback you've been sending us. We really appreciate it. If you haven't given us feedback but would like to, uh, just call us at 720-712-8856. Again, 720-712-8856. Or you can send us an email at feedback at aftersight.org. So feedback, F-E-E-D-B-A-C-K at A-F-T-E-R-S-I-G-H-T dot O-R-G. And we really appreciate that that feedback that you're giving us. Um, before we get to today's guest, I just want to give a little recap of what we talked about last week um, with Tamara and Unsightly Opinions. Um, we went through talking about this month, we're talking about cleaning and home organization and setting up your home and all those types of things. And so she did a, a deep dive into different t- techniques to use um, with vision loss when you're cleaning your house and even some tips on on how um, things might be might be set up in your home as well but we really focused her last episode on on cleaning um, different different places in your in your house and getting yourself organized when you're in a home already or an apartment already but um, and, and, you know, that's the spring cleaning theme that we're, that we're doing, but it's also a time of year when folks are, are moving and getting into new homes. And so that's kind of what we're going to move into today. Our next um, guest is going to talk about moving into a new space. In fact, his first space, um, first apartment that's totally his own and how how that process worked and and hopefully give us some some tips and things that he has learned. So I want to welcome our own Evan Starnes to NLVL. Welcome, Evan. Hey, welcome. It's great to be here. And yeah, thanks for having me. Super. Well, do you want to tell folks, if they don't already know you from Blaine Level Tech, um, what you do here at Aftersight? Yeah, sure. So yes, I am the soon-to-be co-host of uh, the show Blind Level Tech, the show about technology under the umbrella of blindness and low vision. And yeah, I am Aftersight's audio production technician. My job title is long. People call me the audio wizard. I essentially focus a lot of my efforts on our original programming, our newspapers and magazines and um, grocery store ads and the like, and make sure that it's coming, you know, that it sounds good, that the quality is good, and that our volunteers, our 100 plus volunteers, are comfortable and that they're submitting quality audio. So, yeah, um, that's primarily my job. I do some stuff on the side, you know, PSA creation, uh, work with our broadcast and yeah, I host uh, or co-host BLT as well. So um, that's kind of a little bit about what I do here. And so it's a, it's a great time as always. Great. So not only is he our BLT co-host, but he's behind the scenes and other programming you might be listening to if you're listening to any of our audio editions of publications. And he's great working with our volunteers. So thank you, yeah, Evan. You've heard, you've heard my voice, too, on our promos and stuff, yep. you know, in the past. So, yep. yeah, of course. Yes, might be a familiar voice to folks. So, But today, um, we're going to talk about your experience. You've recently, in the last couple of months, moved into your own apartment Mm-hmm. And talk about kind of that that experience. Um, how did how did you even begin that search? Well, I began that search very originally and initially with a desire to move first. That's like <laughs> that's what started it. And um, you know, it kind of was very. It it went from a very gradual to a very sudden. Like, oh my gosh, okay, we're doing this right now. Uh, it's legit. So. Um, initially, what I started um, doing was kind of trying to evaluate evaluate what I wanted to look for um, 
what I had, you know, possession wise and stuff and, um, you know, what I could also afford Mm -hmm. and the area that I wanted to live in too, because, um, I, I wanted to make sure that when I moved into a new area that it was going to be safe and, you know, that I'd be able to walk around and the, you know, the crime rates were good and, but also that I was close to, um, you know, transit or, you know, infrastructure so that I could get things like groceries and the like. So I very first started, honestly, just kind of um, with the rental find, um, like, I I guess you could call it a rental finding app Mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, So I exclusively used Zillow just because it was the one I'd heard of. Accessibility wise, I'd give it maybe a eight and a half out of 10. It's okay. Okay. Um, but then I kind of narrowed my search down to exactly what I was looking for. And so in my case, you know, I was looking for something with one bedroom, um, because the, um, only other option, um, smaller than a one bedroom would be a studio, which mm-hmm. would not be very large for me. And I also wanted something in a good area. So, um, and then under, you can, I did under a particular price range, because if you do some, if you do a minimum price range, you're going to get a lot of you know, a lot of really high price ones there too. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I tried to do that. And then um, it was kind of honestly just a, a game of wait and see. And um, so, yeah, very specifically, you know, I put like allows pets, doesn't, um, you know, has air conditioning. Um, you can even put like has in unit, la- in unit laundry or yeah, whatever you're, whatever you were looking for, just keep in mind that the more um, critiques or the more things that you look for, odds are the the more expensive your the place you're looking for is going to get. Um, so you know, if you if you want to move into a place with a swimming pool and an exercise room versus you know something without, you'd probably be spending at least I'd estimate an extra hundred two hundred extra um, just for that um, kind of amenity. Um, but yeah, then it was just wait and see. And I, Zillow is nice because it, when you save a search, you know, it's always searching for you. And anytime something new comes up, you can have it send you push notifications or emails, you know, saying, Hey, there's a new, there's a new place Mm -hmm. in your search and it'll give you the details. And then you can decide whether you want to jump on it or not. Now, the biggest and hardest and most nerve wracking thing is deciding whether you want to kind of jump on that and, you know, request a tour of the place or not, because, you know, it, you have to plan that out. Mm-hmm. But um, if it meets your criteria and, you know, if, if just kind of follow your gut feeling and if you feel like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be a this this could be, you know, a potentially a really nice, you know, home for the next however many years you decide. Um, right, but I would then, think that would be important if if you, you know, had a short list. Obviously, you wouldn't necessarily go in person to see everyone, but if you had a short no list of those, I would think it would be important to actually go and check out the area, in you know, in person. Yeah, that too. And um, especially as, like, somebody who's totally blind, um, don't just check out, like, you know, when you're done checking out the apartment or home, you know, check out the area around it. You know, go go for a little walk, you know, walk up a, up or down a few streets, kind of check out if there are any businesses around um, and really just see what it's like to navigate around that area because um, it, it's going to be a little uh, depending on the person, it might be a little bit more challenging if you're living in an area where you don't have a whole lot going, you know, you're, it, it'll be harder to get to and from your home, especially if you're using uh, rideshare or public transit and, you know, just trying to do things like get groceries or whatever. It's just going to be a little bit more extraneous, I guess. Mm-hmm. But did, um, did you take someone with you? Um when you I, when you looked at different apartments, or did you do all that on your own? I took somebody with me, and that could really be anybody, a friend, uh, family members. I really, and this will just make your life easier, I would highly recommend if you've got, you know, sighted friends with cars or whatever that can drive you to the, to the destination, um, I'd really recommend it just because they can find things. Um, that would take a little longer for me to find. For instance, like 
um, I'd taken a friend of mine and she found like a, a particular spot in the wall behind my toilet that if I hadn't specifically felt behind the toilet, I wouldn't have noticed. And it looked mm-hmm. pretty gnarly looking. So mm-hmm. I'm glad she found that. And, you know, it made it easier to look for things like where's the thermostats and the um, is there an above counter or an above stove microwave or am I going to have to buy one or is there a dishwasher? Um, it was just a little easier to kind of walk through and point things out. Um, at the same time, too, when you're checking out a place, seriously, like take if, if if the you know if the manager, whoever you're touring the place with, is kind of pushy and trying to rush you through the tour, that's kind of what I'd consider a bit of a red flag. And you might not you might want to look potentially elsewhere, but if they're super patient and kind of let you check everything out and are you know more. Um, you know, they work with you more. That's that's a good sign. Um, and my particular example, I kind of had a very lucky strike and scheduled a tour. And the place that I was looking for was the place that I wanted. And the manager was already really nice. So I don't know. I feel like I I personally kind of lucked out. But yeah. And so then they that that helped with the actual application process. So once you found it, did you still have to fill out an application for the specific apartment? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, once you find the place, so, you know, you've you've checked, let's say you've checked out a few places. And that's the thing, too. If you are, you know, most most times nowadays when you're looking at a place in at least particularly Zillow, I'm sure some other applications allow you to do this. There's a, a request a tour button. And often that will bring you to, at least in my case, it'll bring you to the apartment's website themselves you know, itself. And you'll have to actually fill out an application on the apartment's website of, you know, when, when you want to look at the unit, what unit you want to look at. And um, then you'll have to schedule it that way. Um, And then you're going to run into, um, this will actually be a really good way to see how their, um, how their website is accessibility wise, because I was wondering about that, if that next step then was accessible as well. It, it it really depends on the apartment because you don't want to move into a place where their, their application and their stuff is inaccessible because then when you're actually living there, you might have some hard time, you know, paying rent or you're, you're going to have to um, do a lot more advocating and working with them to make their stuff accessible or, it, you know, it's just going to be a lot more work Um on, on your part. Mm-hmm. Not a bad thing, though, because, you know, it'll mean one more place is accessible. But, yeah, once you fill out, at least from my from my experiences, you fill out that application to go check out the place. You set a date and a time. Um, once you're there, though, I'd seriously highly recommend, if you can, bring, like, a, a note taker or some sort of device to take notes with and pay attention to things that you find around the place, like, um, even little things like does the control panel on the stove, is it digital or is it fully analog? Well, and that therefore means am I going to have to label it with bump dots or braille it or am I even going to have to label it at all? Like, you know, just look at seriously everything and write it all down because it'll make it a lot easier to kind of plan what you have to do, um, you know, besides moving your stuff in to, you know, adapt the place to your needs. So once you found the place, how was the actual moving process? Because I know that can be stressful oh. and, and quite a process too. Um, I know my first couple of places, I just have friends help me move. <laughs> but I don't know if you had friends help you move, if you hired movers, um, how, how you actually tackled the, the move itself. <laughs> I, I will acknowledge this for anybody that has gone through it. It's stressful. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a lot of things happening all at once, like, and you know, it, you just kind of gotta. Um, my advice for anybody is, you want to at least have try to get at least two people to help you because if it's just you and another person, it's gonna take a long time and it's gonna be pretty, pretty tough. I was fortunate enough to have both the luxury of friends and family to help me move. Um, you could hire movers, but they are, they are pretty expensive mm-hmm. and, um, you really kind of want to vet them and make sure that they're, you know, good people and that they're going to respect you and your things because that's what they're doing and moving. Um, but 
if you have friends, you know, I have a friend, for instance, that had a Toyota Tundra, you know, it was big enough to move some of my stuff. And my family had, you know, a, a large truck. If you have friends and family that have that already, seriously try and jump on that because it's a lot easier than hiring movers. Um, now, when you're actually, you know, ready to move out, definitely uh, establish a day that you want to move out and try really to do um, like try to do 95% of your move, like of getting everything from point A to point B all in a day because it'll, it'll just feel so much better. And then you'll already have your, you know, all of your stuff in your new location and you'll be able to get it all organized. Um, and I'd always say, like, try to get everything kind of gathered and packed up and ready to go at least at least a week before you want to move out if you can, because it'll make that experience so much less stressful on you. Um, you'll be able to just throw everything in cars and trucks and kind of get moved over. So did you do any kind of pre-planning? Like once you you had the contract on your your apartment, but to look at that space and were you moving furniture that you already had and so had to look at what fits where or or purchasing things um, that would, would go into that space to c- try to plan out your space. Because when you're renting, you know, some of that space is, it is a certain way. It's not like you're building from scratch. So right. having to, to adapt um, your belongings somewhat to the space itself. Um, I, I would recommend it. Like if you can, um, once you've gotten the place and once you have the keys in your hand and you can go and check it out, go do that and kind of, um, well, find, I would recommend, um, especially if you've got the technology to do it, measure, you know, the especially the big things that you already, if you've already got them, like um, I would say a bed and, you know, your, your, if you have a dresser or a desk, yeah, definitely measure all those things out and really ultimately decide where you want them. Um, because yeah, if you're moving from a, from a three bedroom house to a one bedroom apartment or what have you, you're gonna, needless to say, you're gonna have to probably do a bit of downsizing too. Um, I, I didn't, so I really don't feel like I can speak on that exactly. But, um, I, you know, what I did before I moved everything is I, you know, I took measurements of the bed and my desk and dresser. I didn't have a couch or anything um, like that, um, which made it a lot easier. So, but, um, you know, I ended up getting pretty lucky and just uh, was able to basically move everything. You're going to have to obviously disassemble it too. That's the other thing yeah. is um, you really want to have some tools on hand. If you don't, you're going to need to get some because um, you know, you're, if you haven't moved things like a bed or what have you before, it's not as simple as just throwing the piece of furniture into a big truck. You really kind of want to take it apart. Like I had to take my entire bed apart and then move it and then put it back together in the apartment. And, um, yeah, if I didn't have friends or family, uh, friends and family and tools that would have been a lot more difficult of a process. When I know when people move out of an apartment, you know, they're, you're required to clean and a landlord obviously will do, you know, clean carpets and things like that. When you moved in, did you have to do any cleaning before you moved your things in? No, I, I got a very lucky, um, the place I'd moved into was pretty much spotless. In fact, they had just renovated the apartment Oh, nice! and, you know, all new flooring and everything. So there wasn't really a whole lot I had to do, but I'd always, I would always say, like, if you you know, if you're in doubt, like, really look at everything first and see what you need to clean up. Like, you know, if they make sure they you know bother to clean the toilets and the bathtubs and stuff too, because that's quite important before you move in. It'll just again make your process move. move, It'll make the process a lot easier. So you already had an idea as your friends are helping your family are helping you move things in, like where things are going. I think that's always great. You know, not not just well. It's a bed, so obviously it's going in the bedroom. But if you kind of know where it's going to sit, it's going on X wall. Yeah, or... because those things can be difficult to move once they're put together mm-hmm. and heavy. If you decide they need to be elsewhere. Yeah, 
Absolutely. So I, already, I, I had already had a plan of, you know, I would like the bed on this wall. I want my desk in the same room on the opposite wall by the door, you know, and my dresser in the corner. And then um, the, I had a little TV stand that matched the dresser, but I ended up putting that out in the living room. Like, yeah, kind of just know where you want everything because um, that's it's, it's totally 100% your decision to make to people. Um, they might, you know, put things, you know, where they think they'll go, but often, you know, you'll have people asking you like, Hey, where do you want this bed? Or where do you want the dresser? Or how do you want it? Um, at least from my experiences. Right. Well, hopefully, hopefully they would ask you where hopefully. you would want things. They, That's, they should. They should. That's a good it's thing to stuff. do. You're the Absolutely. one who's living there. So, so you've been in your space, your apartment now for a few months. Um, what's been your your biggest adjustment? Just living on your own um, for the first time and and really getting things set up. I know, the, you know, the big move day. You get all the big pieces in, but you still have boxes to unpack and all that, and that can take a take a while. Oh, absolutely. Um, well, so the biggest adjustment um, is probably going to be if you're if you've been living with family. Or whatever for you know however many years it's going to be a huge adjustment to going to do stuff on your own because you're calling the shots you know you decide when you do what you do and how you do it so like you decide when you do the laundry how much you want to do and how you do it you know you decide what what day is a good day to clean your apartment or house or whatever and you know you, you that's 100 percent your decision and um what I definitely say to anybody moving for the first time, if you if you're working, um, I I didn't do this, and I kind of wish I had. Um, seriously, even if you're moving on a weekend, take a day or two off because you're going to need it to adjust to your new place. Um, now, as far as boxes, um, that's going to be a thing that you're going to have to contend with. I like you can get all your boxes and stuff unpacked in a day, but it's going to be like exhausting so i'd always see i would always recommend get all the big stuff situated um you know just take a day to do that and then um really honestly as far as unpacking you know boxes getting everything situated ultimately really depends on the person um what what was easiest for me was you know i organized everything in, into their own individual boxes. I had a box for things for my desk, a box of candles and scented things, a box of electronics. Um, and I pretty much just took it one box at a time um, and one day at a time. And that made it super easy to really figure out where I wanted specific things from that, only that box. And, you know, I had a day to really kind of just organized that particular section and it didn't feel like I was overwhelmed with a whole bunch of junk and trying to situate it all and, you know, manage a, a big giant chaotic mess. Did you have to do anything um, different as you were trying to organize, um, like purchase oh, yeah. any kind of organizational tools or anything like that, just being in a, a different space? I definitely did. Um, and that's uh, kind of another good point, too, to, um, that I'm glad that you, um, you brought up, is that every person is going to have a different way they want their things to look. There is no one way to organize. Like, how I organize might not be how you like to organize. So, um, you know, really kind of n try and figure out exactly what you have first. Um, because like I, I was lucky and had a whole bunch of tubs and boxes and things already at my disposal. Um, but really kind of figure out how you, how you like to lay things out and, um, try a few different things. Like you're gonna, um, you're, you're not going to, at least most likely you're not going to settle, um, the first time you, you organize things. So for instance, um, when I was the big, a big thing was actually putting silverware and kitchen utensils and accessories in, you know, in respective drawers. I was going to ask um, you about the kitchen because I think that can be when you're in a different kitchen and you have to, you're used to things being in a certain place. And do you have that same drawer right beside the stove or whatever it might be having to reestablish that? I, I always think the kitchen can be one of the more complicated places to organize. 
Yeah, and at least from my experiences, um, it, it doesn't matter what kitchen you go. Um, if you're moving from one kitchen to the to the uh, to another, you're going to totally have to reestablish uh, everything because at least pretty much any kitchen is laid out a little differently. Um, so, for instance, I thought I would had a draw a good drawer to put towels and oven mitts and stuff like that, but it turns out it was a little too small and actually would have been better suited to um, like longer spoons and tongs and spatulas and the like. But, you know, it it took a month of, um, you know, trying to work with the current setup I had had and, um, you know, having to cram everything into one drawer before I, you know, I kind of made the decision like, you know, I, th- I think... Uh, let me just see how this, you know, how these utensils fit in this drawer, and then realizing, oh wow, that's that's a whole lot better. Why didn't I just think of that before? Um, and it's kind of just a matter of like, you know, if you like to specifically have, and if you're able to have, like, you know, your oven mitts and stuff right next to the oven, versus you know, um, on the side or in a different in a different location. You know, it really, it really kind of just it's it's trial and error, really, is what it is. Yeah, and I, and it's okay to readjust. I think that's good for absolutely for people to remember and not not to get frustrated, especially if it's your first um, your first place. Especially your first place, you're going to have to do a lot of readjusting. Let's. I'm just, I'm just going to be completely upfront because, I mean, if you've never lived on your own before. You know, this is your place. You get to really make it your own. It's part of you, you know your. It's part of who you are, pretty much. You know, it might be, and um, and honestly, once you're established, there's nothing wrong with it. even every. You know, I know people that move things around every six months because you know you you get bored of it. That's totally okay too. There's nothing to be frowned upon, and really, a huge point I'd like to make um, and emphasize is there's no one right way. And there never will be. Yeah, the most important thing is that it works for you. Yeah. It's like getting, you know, a new phone or whatever. You want to, you know, customize that to you and to how you work. It's the same with a, you know, with a, a new home. Well, Evan, thank you for sharing with us your your very recent experience of being mm-hmm. a first-time um on your own, setting up your own place, uh, because I think that's, it's a very unique experience, but, uh, it's, it's a great one to go through. It's, it's exciting to have your own space and you can have it reflect your personality and be organized and decorated and everything, how you want it. So that's always a really exciting thing. I, I think, um, your, your first place on your own. Absolutely. And I'll say one particular thing I had learned from from this experience is, you know, as much as I wanted to have everything planned out and pieced out and orchestrated, you know, so it happened, you know, it, as much as I wanted to have it all planned out, you know, there's still going to be things that ha- that come up that you're going to need to navigate that you might not have necessarily gone through before. So... Well, super. Well, congratulations on being in your, your new apartment. And thank you for uh, giving us some information and, and maybe folks that are, are considering uh, moving out into their their own individual space as well. Uh, just some tips for that. We appreciate that. Absolutely. And I'd highly recommend it. So next week, um, we're back with Tamara. But instead of talking about cleaning, um, we're going to continue on the theme of, of moving. Uh, but she also recently moved. But uh, she moved into a place that she purchased and really went in and tailored it, um, did some some construction work there and really tailored it for her her needs. And so we'll be talking a little bit about that, that when you have that opportunity, and again, weighing what you might want with with costs, because that's always a factor, of course, but talking with her about things that she did, how she incorporated technology into her new home. So uh, we'll be continuing on with our our spring cleaning and moving theme, um, but moving from looking at 
moving into a rental to moving into a home that that she owns and and some of the extra things she's able to do um, since that's her own property. So we hope that you'll join us for that um, and get some more tips. Again, if you have any questions or feedback, please give us a call at 720-712-8856 or email us at feedback at aftersight.org. And I just want to put a little thought in your, in your ear, um, not to forget that we will be having our bringing print to life hike coming up, not till July. So it's a little bit early, but I know summer schedules get packed really quickly. So July 27th, uh, be thinking about joining us for the hike. We will be at Myers Gulch here in Boulder County. We'd love to have you join us. And you can find out more information about that on our website, which is www.aftersight.org. Thanks so much for listening. I hope that this information has helped you navigate your life with vision loss. 